Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 13-3. This is a quick one on polar intersections. This is something that may not have occurred to you when you first see it. So this, this will be a new tip and trick about the calculator that you're going to learn in this one. When somebody presents to you a couple of uh, polar functions, it's tricky to figure out how many times they actually touch. So let's do this first one here. Let's put um, R1 equals 3 plus 2 cos theta into our TI. So I'm going to go down, and you can see I need to switch into polar mode. And life is better in radians. I know you don't believe me, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to put in my R1 3 plus 2 cos. Oops, what did I do? 3 plus 2 cos theta. And I'm going to put 3 plus 2 cos uh, theta in there. And let's go ahead and do zoom standard. And there is my cardioid with a nice dent in it, or dimple, I think is the official terminology, believe it or not. All right, next, we want to put in R2, 5 sine 2 theta. Make ourselves a nice rose here. So this one is 5 sine 2 theta, and close parentheses. All right, let's look at that. There's our rose. I might even zoom in a little here just to try to get this to be as clear a picture as I can get it to be for you. All right, 6 and negative 6, negative 6 and 6. Does that get everything? All right, that's as good as I can make it for you. And you see here, both on the calculator and on the slideshow that I did with the Mac Grapher program, looks like there's a fair number of intersections. How many intersections do you think that these two graphs have? Well, if I start uh, about there, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, right? Eight? No, they actually only intersect four times, believe it or not. This is kind of hard for us to understand how this can be. So that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. What we're going to want to do is instead of looking at the completed picture, we're going to want to watch it build these a step at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to mode and I'm going to switch from sequential mode to simultaneous mode. This is going to graph the two equations at the same time, a little bit of one and a little bit of the other. And I think I can make it go even slower, yes, if I do that. So now, if I hit graph, this is going to go very slowly, but you can see the two graphs are definitely touching over there at 34 degrees-ish, and then they touch again right there, but now the rose is taken off and headed for the fourth quadrant of all places. So they're not there at the same time. They're not in the second quadrant at the same time. This is like a, a horse race. And now as the Limousin is down, made it into the third, they're both, I think they hit there in the third, and the Limousin is slowly creeping forward. Well, the rose is really, because it's got the sine two theta, it's going twice as fast, but they're gonna hit again there. See, there's that second uh, hit in the third quadrant. But now, look at that. The rose was already in the fourth uh, when the Limousin is down there, but the rose is up there in the second, so they were opposite for the second and fourth quadrant. And now we've gone through one whole rotation. So I hope that slow horse race there uh, helps you appreciate the fact that they were not in the same quadrant at the same time, that only these four uh, intersections here were where they actually collided at the same time. Otherwise, they were not there at the same time. They just look like it after the fact if you just sort of look at tracks in the mud. So you could imagine two trucks having a race on a beach, and you might think that they collided by the fact that their tracks overlap, but you know that they clearly didn't because there's not a wreck. 
So, how can we see this better? How can we determine where those are? If I try right now to do second trace and I want my intersect feature, there is no intersect feature in polar mode. So what do we gotta do? We gotta bring the funk back. We gotta get down here and go back to the funk mode and get our functions in a way that can be seen in function mode. So you remember that our two equations were, I gotta go back myself, uh, our two equations were r equals three plus two cos theta. So let's make something that will let us see that. Let's do three plus two cos x. And then what was our other equation? Was five times sine two theta, only now theta has become x. So let's see if zoom trig does any good. Not perfect, but let's see here. What is the window that I specified? Ah, okay. So we only want to be looking from 0 to 360. That's all that matters. So let's stop this and let's make our... Oh, well, we should be <clears throat> in radians. Well, all right, let's do it in degrees. We'll switch over to degrees and match my slides and say 0 to 360 and have a tick mark every 45 and then our y scale needs to go down to negative 6 and up to positive 6 with a tick mark every 1. All right so there's the graph now matches the slide. All right so the whole point of having this switch over to um, function mode is because we wanted to be able to use the excellent calculator feature second trace intersect that if we want to be on the first graph uh, yes and then the second graph and then the first point over there is about right there and it looks like I should answer that they intersect at 34 comma 4.6 but that would be wrong because when we entered this, we took an r equals theta equation and we entered it as y equals something in terms of x. So we have to be careful to come back over and uh, transpose. We put y in for r and x in for theta. So we flip flop, so we better flip flop our answer and say that this happens at 4.6 comma 34. So if we keep doing intersect, um, we should get these four points here, and you might check yourself by doing second trace intersect, and you could even do it in radians, but I'll stick to my slideshow here in degrees, and you'll see those are the four actual intersections. So you should really be as careful as you can and make sure to uh, not trust your eyes as far as sequential mode goes, that this mode that we did over here of simultaneous mode is very good for helping us find out when they actually cross paths and not just look like it after the fact. <laughs>